Good morning, Connections. It's Friday, April 23rd, 21. <sighs> Could someone slow the clock? I feel like the days just move way too fast, and there's so much to accomplish and so much that God desires for us to put our hands to and to bless others with. And yet the days keep falling one after another after another. We're to Friday. We still have time. We still have one more day to reach those that God has placed on our, our heart to reach. Those that God has put in our path. Give us the eyes to see them today, Lord. So let's get started. I'm going to wrap up our conversation about humility, kind of uh, day two of this heart condition idea, and I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> God bless me. Okay, let's try that again. Humility, heart condition, the consequences of not allowing God in to shape our heart through the process of humility. I think we all understand that the opposite of humility, the opposite of being a humble man or woman of God, is to be a prideful man or woman. And we may think in our pride that we are the quintessential man or woman of God. And that heart condition that we talked about yesterday of believing that we are the best thing ever Perhaps the heart condition that Peter was suffering as uh, Jesus entered his final days. If that is not addressed and allowed to continue to grow and grow and, and we do not submit to the process of humility, there are consequences. There are consequences for ourselves and there's consequences for all of those that God desires for us to reach. One of the easiest ways to hamstring a church is to, to allow pride to go unchecked and run rampant amongst the body of Christ. And that's why being in submission and allowing the process of humility to continue to realign our hearts and, and make sure that we are putting forth the authentic word of God, the one that was handed down through Jesus to his disciples and apostles, the one that has been carried from generation to generation till we have been entrusted with it in order to be servants of God, in order to, to reach those that God has called us to reach, we must operate in, in humility with the right heart. So we're gonna pick up kind of this warning um, Colossians and the, the letter written to the Colossians from Paul is a very upbeat, very encouraging. They are tracking well, but he has some concerns and you will recognize those as he seems to be writing specifically to some people that he's, he's seeing that are prideful and destructive to the body. So, starts in one, since then, you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. We talked earlier in the week of the, the rivalry amongst the parts of the body of Christ, the, the trying to get ahead while, um, you know, and, and those things can happen you know, instead of celebrating uh, others' success, instead of celebrating how God has equipped others, we tend to give in to pride, and which creates tension and bitterness and, and many other unattractive, ungodly traits. So, here is Paul's warning to the church that are just being formed. Remember, these churches are 
are young. And the enemy is not going, is not happy that they're being birthed, not happy that they're coming together as one, of one accord. The devil's going to take every opportunity to sow division wherever he can. And that's for the earliest church, and that's for our church today. So this same counsel that Paul is offering the Colossians is the same counsel that God is offering us today. Focus your heart on God. Keep your eye on the prize and submit to the process of humility. I threw this in because this is Jesus addressing the very issue that Paul is addressing some uh, many years later. And this is one of his favorite you know, uh, illustrations. It's the Pharisees and the teachers of the law and how they've propped themselves up and uh, suggest that they are as close to God as anyone. And in this passage, shortly before Jesus' uh, death and resurrection, he just lets it all out. And in Matthew, it's called the seven woes uh, of the Pharisees. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You travel over the land and sea to win a single convert. And when you have succeeded, you make them twice as much a child of hell as you are. Jesus never minced words. But that's the consequence of getting out of sort, not allowing God in to test our heart condition, refusing that assistance and allowing pride to just consume us. If that's where we end up, we're not only being corrupted by the enemy, we are corrupting others as well. And I think we all can understand the consequence, the actions that follow actions, and how quickly that could spiral out of control. And that's why Paul is speaking it into the uh, Colossians church, and why Jesus is speaking it against the institution that has been created in God's name through the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. We don't want to become corrupt as the Pharisees. <clears throat> Returning to Colossians in 2 and verse 18. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person also goes into great detail about what they have seen. They are puffed up with idle notions by their unspiritual mind. We've referenced this passage when we were talking about our culture and the desire for new and improved and, and it has to be the latest and greatest. And we see that in our cell phones and in our computers and all of our tech. We see that just about, you know, on the grocery store shelf that it's always new and improved, always something uh, more attractive than the last. And when we we treat God's word that way, or we seek God in all of the the noise, we can be easily taken off course. As the Pharisees took off all of those that were following behind them, into a different course that was leading them away from God instead of towards God. This is the consequence. This is prideful men and women who are corrupting God's word out of a, a heart that's motivated by other things, accumulation of wealth or, or power or adoration. New and improved. Beware. Allow God to keep your heart in the right condition through the process of humility. 
They have lost connection with the head, from whom the whole body, supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows as God causes it to grow. We are the body of Christ. He is the vine and we are the branches. However you want to, to illustrate it, our source is Jesus. If we begin to be corrupted by pride and begin to craft our own word that tickles the ears of others and brings great fame and fortune, but it does not align with God's word, it is worthless. The only way that we thrive and the church thrives and our mission is accomplished is by staying in touch with Jesus and submitting to the process of being taught and tested through humility. I praise God that Peter, who was so essential in the early church, his heart test came, he failed, Jesus returns, helps put it all back together, and Peter is a better man because of it, because now he is operating in a pure heart, in a humble heart, and is teachable. How teachable are you? Are you willing to seek God? Are you willing to follow his plan? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for the time that you have blessed us with. Thank you, Lord, that you have, have rescued us from the the darkness and have brought us into the light. Lord, remind us daily, hourly, every minute to keep our eyes trained upon you. We submit to you, Lord. We we submit to the processes that you place before us to keep our hearts pure. We are as susceptible as, as anyone else in the world to, to seek out new and fresh and improved. Your word is more than enough. You are more than enough. Help us to live it out well. For those within the church that are growing at our side and those that are outside the church that need a word from you today. Equip us, Lord. Clothe us in your righteousness your humility and your love, your grace and your mercy. Help us to be a shining example of what it is to be in right relationship with you. We desire that those that come in behind us will prosper and thousands upon thousands would be saved as their hearts align with yours. Bless us, Lord. Bless us with an abundance to share with our neighbors today. For your glory and your honor, in Jesus' name, amen. Have a wonderful Friday. I will see you back here, to, not tomorrow morning. I will see you back here on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, and we will do this all over again. Um, 
especially looking forward to, to seeing those that will be in attendance in the sanctuary. We are also looking forward to the day when we can re-expand uh, uh, into our new facility. We are already talking about as we shift back, many of us shift back to being under one roof, how to provide uh, a breakfast. We're in talks now with what that might look like. Um, but uh, we do not want you to go hungry all morning. Um, so we will figure out a, an in-between. And then once we transition to the new facility, uh, we are going to reintroduce some of the things that we were doing in the chapel prior to the pandemic. So stay tuned. I'll keep you posted here. But uh, enjoy your weekend, and I'll see you on Sunday. Know that I love you and I miss you. Until we see each other again, be good. Mm -hmm.